With the goal of producing the most effective nuclear weapons, a lot of effort went into making smaller bombs that could fit on top of ICBMs. Speed of deployment, targeting accuracy, and countermeasure evasion being the main areas of interest. Above certain yields, nuclear weapons transition from strategically practical into the realm of psychological horrors. The yields vary considerably, but most nuclear weapons deployed are below 5 megatons, with many between 100 kilotons and 1 megaton. To devastate a city or render a military target inoperable, you really don't need much more than 15 kilotons. But strike capabilities are only one part of nuclear strategy, flexing and psychological impact are another. The Soviet Tsar Bomba was an impractical weapon of war, but the display of its power had long-lasting effects in the minds of many. This is why so-called doomsday weapons were sometimes devised. In 1946, physicist Stanislav Ulam proposed the idea of using nuclear bombs as a form of propulsion. Later, in 1957, after the Pascal B nuclear test, a two-ton metal plate that was used to cover the shaft in which the bomb was detonated was never found. Initial calculations based on the single frame of film that showed the plate indicated it was accelerated straight up at six times escape velocity. Although later thought is the plate was likely vaporized by compression heating in the air, the results made the idea of nuclear propulsion suddenly very real. A year later, in 1958, a study was initiated to explore the concept further. Codenamed Project Orion, it was tasked to develop the idea into a functional technology. The concept is simple, the vehicle propels small nuclear bombs out behind a pusher plate in a series, each detonation imparting thrust. Small-scale models were built and flown using conventional explosives to demonstrate the concept. The amount of mass Orion could theoretically put into orbit was immense. Where rockets measured payloads in kilograms or tens of tons, Orion payloads could be measured in hundreds of thousands of tons. The scientists working on the project wanted to build ships to go to Mars and the outer solar system. Orion could travel to Mars in just a few weeks, with trips to Saturn in under four months. However, Orion was also looked at from a military perspective, and Orion was reimagined as nothing less than a doomsday weapon. An idea outlined by physicist Anthony Zuparo described a bomb placed on an Orion that could be rapidly delivered to the Soviet Union and destroy most of their nuclear forces all at once. The bomb would have physically been the size of a multi-story building, placed on top of an Orion and launched at the Soviet Union. The yield of the bomb in question could have been as high as 5 gigatons. That's the equivalent of 5 billion tons of TNT. This bomb would have had the destructive force of a mid-sized asteroid impact, destroying everything over hundreds of square kilometers and causing damage far outside that range. The fallout would have caused lasting effects, and the ozone would have been severely damaged, increasing surface UV radiation all over the planet. A nuclear winter would have crippled the biosphere. More disturbingly, this wasn't even the most powerful bomb proposed. Edward Teller, known as the father of the hydrogen bomb, proposed building a 10 gigaton warhead. Such a bomb would have been impractical for a missile or a plane, but would have easily fit on Orion. Teller describing his doomsday bomb, a 10,000 megaton weapon, by my estimation, would be powerful enough to set all of New England on fire, or most of California, or all of the UK and Ireland, or all of France, or all of Germany, or both North and South Korea, and so on. When the chairman of the General Advisory Committee, GAC, of the US Atomic Energy Commission learned of Teller's idea, he replied by stating, it would have been a better world without Teller. Years earlier, in 1949, before Teller was promoting his doomsday weapon, the chairman of the GAC, Isidore Isaac Robbie, and physicist Enrico Fermi wrote an annex stating the recommendation against the development of the hydrogen bomb. One section stated, Such a weapon goes far beyond any military objective, and enters the range of very great natural catastrophes. By its very nature, it cannot be confined to a military objective, but becomes a weapon which in practical effect is almost one of genocide. These words were even more true for the proposed gigaton bombs, which would have been so overpowered their use would have been nothing less than elective extinction. To Teller's credit, when asked how he felt about his role in developing hydrogen bombs, he would usually reply with, if I didn't do it, someone else would have. Riding on the wings of Orion, a multi-gigaton bomb would have likely resulted in the end of human civilization. Life in some form would have likely survived. The impact that killed the dinosaurs was around 100,000 gigatons, and life still found a way, 
but it would be a mass extinction, one in which humanity might not withstand. The Gigaton Bomb was a footnote, an idea tossed around by scientists even in the Soviet Union, but it never got much further than paper. Orion, however, did get further. Serious research was conducted and formal plans drawn up. Trips to Mars, Saturn, and even Alpha Centauri were not off the table. But Orion's military origins also persisted, and a concept for it was given more attention and more backing. A device that could actually outdo the Gigaton Bomb, something straight out of science fiction. Something that we actually almost had hanging over our heads.